Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. This one is going to get a little bit messy and it's still a work in progress. So please bear that in mind. But what we're going to be trying to create is a what am I effect. So I'm just going to show you an example of how this should work. Now there's a few little bugs with this I still need to iron out, but in principle this should work. So I'm asked a question to think of a cat, dog or mouse. And then it's going to ask me some questions and then working out what those questions are, whether I answer true or false or whether I go left or right, will basically allow it to work out what I am. This is basically like a basic take of 20 questions, but with a lot less questions. So I click to start. So it asks me, do I like long walks? So do I like long walks? Does the animal I'm thinking I'll do that? So I'm going to say yes. So I'll lean to the left to select so yes. If I lean to the other way, it's a no, so that's false. So I'm going to go this way for true. Then I click to continue. This is where I need a bit of work. I need to actually have it so when I've selected an option, it then transitions to the next question. That's not currently uh, working in this build. Then ask me another question. So do I enjoy baths or bathing, essentially? So I'm going to say yes again. Do I eat a lot of cheese? No. Am I considered a rodent? No. And do I bark? Yes. And it was giving my answer, which is a dog, obviously. So I start again, I go with what am I? Uh, I'm going to think of another animal. So do I like long walks? No. Do I enjoy baths? No. Do I eat a lot of cheese? No. And am I considered a rodent? No again. Do I bark? No. And I'm now a cat. If I do this one more time, do I like long walks? No. Do I enjoy baths? No. Do I get a lot of cheese? Yes. Am I cut as a rodent? Yes. Do I bark? No. And that should give us a mouse. So it's very rudimentary. Um, obviously there's a lot of things that could be fixed. The idea of at the moment having to screen tap to change between each question is not ideal. And it's something I would like to try and iron out. So that might be an amendment to this video in the future. But for now, I'm just going to go through the process of how this was built and some of the challenges we faced along the way. Uh, as you can kind of just see down here in the patch editor, which is zoomed out, it's a little bit of a, um, a nest, a little bit of a mess. So let me just zoom in, and just to give you an idea of the kind of chaos we're working with here. So we have our head rotation values there, which are detecting whether I'm going left or right, which is then also being checked against what question I'm currently on. And when those two conditions meet, certain parameters so it can only work with what yes or no or one or two then it will then continue that chain along and add that value to our final total i'm doing this all in patch editor so this is going to be a little bit glitchy um, the best way of doing this would be using script oh somebody's moving a load of bottles outside or there's a train moving or something but yeah, as you can kind of gather this is going to be a little bit messy and i will have to amend this so this is very much a kind of concept filter. Anyway, let us begin. Okay, so I've just started with a blank project and we're going to go through this bit by bit. Now please bear in mind that this effect, like I said earlier, is a bit problematic. It doesn't fully work. It's about, I'd say probably about 80-90% working. Um, and it's basically got some room for improvement, but we'll try and see if we can uh, improve it whilst we build it. So first thing I did is I just imported some of images. So I've just got this cat, dog, and mouse uh, illustration. I just quickly whizzed up in Illustrator, like so. And then I need to create a canvas. And on this canvas, I just need to add a rectangle. So this rectangle is going to be our indicator for whether we are giving a true indication or a false indication, whether we're tilting our head left or right, essentially. So I'm going to adjust its pinning to be the top corner, like so. And I'm going to adjust its width to be roughly half of my page. Really. So go for something like this. Again, we will make this look we can always make this look pretty afterwards. For now I just focus on getting the core functionality in there. So we've got rectangle creator, I'm going to go to materials and click on the plus up arrow. 
to create a new material. This is going to be our true material. I'm going to make sure it's a flat and I'm just going to give it a green color. Like for now, again, I could apply a graphic to this if I wanted to. And with this rectangle selector, I'm also going to call this true. I'm going to duplicate that rectangle and set this duplicate to be pinned to the opposite corner. And set this to have a new material, and this new material is going to be flat red. And, also, and this will be called our false. And again, these aren't perfectly lined out yet. I can always fix it afterwards. For now, I'm just focusing on getting, like I said, the core functionality in there. So the way we could actually divide this is using our device screen. So we can actually, for example, go to view, patch editor, bring our device in, go to screen size, divide, divide by a vector of two. So we're dividing our x and y axis, and then link my position and scales. In fact, I don't need my position, I just want my scale values. Um, actually, no, we'll just use the size. Size makes most sense for this. So, I'm just going to use our size values for both of these. And I'm just going to hook these both up. And I want to divide it by. So, let's say the x axis is our horizontal, so I want to divide it by 2 for that. And. Eight for that. And just make sure that both of these are still got the same scale set to them, which I do. And then just align and pin these to the top. So 4 by 20, select my true, pin this to the top corner, and same with the other. Like so there we go. So now I should have a true and false sort of indicator. At the moment, again, they're doing nothing. We're going to have to uh, give them some instructions in a bit. But like I said, we always start off with setting everything up first before we can continue. And I'm now going to add a face tracker. So we're going to need our face tracker to act as our indicator for whether we are giving a gesture of left or right. And I'm just going to quickly call this questions, because this is where our questions are going to be housed. I'm going to create a new null object. This new ob object will be my question so everything that's contained within this will be the initial question that is shown to the user and I'm going to add a plane and I'm just going to roughly scale this so it's sort of longer than it is high and again I'm not using exact values for now I'm just trying to get the uh, core functionality built in And this plane I'm just going to call question. Now I've already created some assets for this, so I'm just going to again go to my folder where I've got these stored and select my questions, import those in, and I'm also going to import my overall arcing question. So this question plain selector, I'm going to go to materials, create new material, select this new material and call this my question, I'm going to give this the what am I uh, texture, make that flat. So this is what's going to show up at the beginning, 
Now I've done that, I'm going to just duplicate my question and I'm going to change this to be question one. And I'm just going to for now turn the visibility off on my initial null patch at the top. So with this new question playing created, I'm just going to again rename this to be question one. So I'm naming as I go along and I'm going to change this material to be a new material. This new material is going to be called question one. Now again we could probably explore doing this another way by actually using the image sequence to change the questions and then taking the values from that. But I'm working this way because it's um, just generally speaking I had some issues with the other way and this is the only way around it found it for the uh, roadblock that I'm in. But again we may come back to this and amend things later in a future video. So here I have my initial question that's asked. I'm going to now copy my canvas onto this. So my canvas is now embedded into this initial question. And now I've got this done, this, I can now duplicate this null object. This will give us question two. We name the second plane to be question two. And now it's a process of repeating. So again, I'm just going to create another new material, select this new material, and give this my question two texture, making sure it's flat and so on and so on. So I need to do this for each of the five questions I have. The reason I went for five or an odd number is it gives me a, um, enough data for the, uh, for the uh, basically the effect to be able to work out what uh, the animal is. So the way I'm working this effect works is if it's true, it gives us a value of one. If it's a false, it gives us a value of two. It then adds up all of those values over the five questions. And if it equals the set value of let's say six, seven or 10 or whatever, it will then give us a result of whether this is a dog, cat or mouse. It's not perfect, so if you give it a result that isn't, um, if you basically move on without answering any questions, it can actually give you the result of nothing. Uh, and again, we could put another image in there to indicate that it can't work it out and to try again, if we wanted to. So I'm just going to keep duplicating this. There we go. So I should have my five questions, each on these null objects, which contain our question plane, and then a canvas for each one. Each of these is going to use its own canvas, just so we can keep the visual results shown without having to reset every single time. So this is the uh, most of the legwork. We just need one more thing to do. So again, I'm just going to select my face tracker again and add one more null object. This new null object we're going to call our answers. I'm going to add three planes to this. So this will be answer one, answer two, and answer three. So we should have dog, cat, and mouse. I'm then going to create a new material for each of these. And I'm going to call these cat. Dog and mouse. So you can sort of see if we used to have loads of questions, how complex this could get very quickly. Hence why I'm only going for three options with this effect. And even then, uh, this would be problematic because uh, this would probably not get approved because we're using static text largely. There we go. So I'll give answer one, the cat, answer two, the dog. And to free the mouse. So we should now have something that's looking like this. We've got our answers all sort of stacked on top of each other. All our questions are currently stacked on top of each other. And there is no logic in there now. So now this is the initial setup done. 
we can now move on to setting up our patch editor, which we'll do in the next video.